If you go down to the grocery store and you say, I need some wine, they're going to point you to the booze section, right? But in the Bible, the word wine means juice. Every time the word is used, think juice. But then you have to discern by context whether it means alcoholic juice or just fresh fruit juice. Wine is fresh fruit juice. Wine is also strong drink. Wine is also called liquor. Wine is alcoholic in the Bible sometimes. And you have to have the wisdom and the discernment to separate those two. Not everybody that drank wine was getting drunk in the Bible. They're just drinking juice. It's clear. It's fresh. It talks about wine in the grape. The grape that's still on the vine is in no way alcoholic. Amen. And it's called wine. Amen. Right? We're warned about wine. We're warned about sobriety and drunkenness, really. And so you have to remember that, that, you know, wine is something in context you have to look at. Drunkenness is a sin. Jesus was not a bartender. Right? People, oh, well, Jesus made wine. Jesus was not a bartender. He didn't get people drunk. Jesus, everything he did was perfect. He didn't make corruption. He didn't make fruit juice that was corrupt. He made it pure. Jesus himself said when he comes back, he will drink of the fruit of the vine. What comes off the vine? That's, that's fruit juice. He's talking about fruit juice. So when you see the wine, have a little bit of honesty about yourself and don't justify drunkenness look at what it says in context i'm going to tell you straight up if you get drunk it's wrong if you get if you drink to drunk it's wrong it's a sin god warns about it in first corinthians 5 he says but i have i have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother right hey you say you're a christian you're here in this church and this in first corinthians 5 is written as a church ordinance that's known as a drunkard he says with such a one no not to eat Right? We're supposed to kick somebody out that's known as a drunkard. Amen. Now, if you say, Brother Fannin, I, I messed up last year at Christmas. You're not known as a drunkard. Okay? Look, don't mess up at Christmas either. Don't take what I'm saying out of context. But look, known as a drunkard is somebody that has a problem, that won't get it right, and maybe you're struggling with it. Hey, get it right. God wants you to be separated from the church, so it's more important to get it right and come back. Drunkenness is a sin. There's a commandment for sobriety. We're supposed to kick them out of the church and not associate with them, not have dinner with them. Therefore, put away from yourselves that wicked person, he says, the drunkard. Now, you're in Proverbs 23. Find verse number 19. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of the flesh. You hear that? Don't be around the drunks. Don't be with the drunks, Proverbs 23 is saying. Same thing 1 Corinthians 5 is saying. Don't be around them. Get them out of your company. Don't sit down and eat with them. Don't be among them. Look, he says in 21, For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hey, wake up. Be vigilant. Don't hang out with a bunch of drunks. And I don't care if they get drunk from pills or smoking weed or meth or whatever it is they do when they got red eyes and they're drowsy and they're not sober, that's somebody you shouldn't be associating with. Hey, if you knock the door and somebody's clearly drunk and you're trying to preach the gospel to them, good luck with that. There's a reason it's called spirits and you just watch what's going to come out of their mouth. See if, see if they really want to hear the gospel. And listen, I'm not saying it's impossible. God can do all things, but there's a reason we're told it's sobriety. There's a reason they call it spirits at the store. Look at verse 29 in this chapter. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? Right, they're laying it out here. What's a drunk like? Have you ever been around somebody that's drunk and they're just talking and talking and talking? I had one a few months ago. I was out on the beach installing internet for this hotel and I'm up a ladder. I'm, I kid you not, this has happened twice. Actually, it's happened in Texas also where I'm on a ladder. I'm, I'm 20 foot in the air, 30 foot in the air, and a drunk wants to come up and hold my ladder for me. You want to talk about rebuke them sharply, right? I mean, you better get away from me, buddy. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to throw a wrench at you and hit you in the head. I mean, I mean, I've had it twice in different states where a drunk thinks, well, hey, man, you got a dollar? No, go away. I'm working. Hey, man, I'll do anything. Hey, go away. I'm working. Hey, I'll hold your ladder. Like, you can't even hold yourself up. You want to come hold my ladder? Stumbling around. But then there's one guy over here. He just kept talking. and Like, dude, I don't have time. Dude, I don't want to hear it. And he kept talking. And, and he's just like, 
Well, I guess you don't really want to hear it, do you? Oh, yeah, I don't want to hear it, man. Take your drunken babbling somewhere else. I want to hear the foolishness. Look at verse 30. That they tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. It says, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his collar in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, when it moveth itself. Okay, now look, some people use this to say, or this, this guy up in Washington, Ashton, he says, it's okay to drink and you know when to stop when it starts moving. <laughs> That's when you stop drinking. That's what he teaches his church. It's okay to drink until the point where it's, where it's moving around because you can't reach it, okay? That's wicked. That's not what it's saying. It's talking about fermentation. When wine ferments, it moves. The Bible's telling us about that process here. There's scientific evidence here. And he's like, well, it's, you just drink until things start moving. Then you're okay. That's not a sin, but a liar. And listen, he's not the only one. He's not special. The Pentecostals have been saying that for years. The Southern Baptists teach the same junk, yeah. right? Not in this church, though. Amen. Drunkenness is wicked. Amen. Look, wicked. verse 32. At the last. Listen up, children. Why you don't, when your friends, hey, children, when your friends, eh, it's all right, just have one drink. That first drink ain't that bad. It's nothing, oh, nothing bad will happen. Just try, just try one little hit. Take this pill. Listen what it says here. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Sometimes it's not until the end of it that you realize how bad it is. At the last, here comes the bite. Here comes the sting. Here comes the infection in your mind. Here comes the foolishness going to pour out of your heart because you're no longer sober. Look what it says. 33. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. If you drink, even if it's one little drink, you are not sober. According to the state of Florida, one drink, you're not sober. According to the Bible, one drink, you're not sober. And it says you're going to do and you're going to say things that you're going to regret. You're going to say things you wish you could call back. You're going to hurt people you love because you're not sober. You let some spirit come take control of your mind. Look at verse 34. Yea, thou shalt be as him that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. You think of a boat in a sea, right? You think of that mast up top. It just sits there and whips back and forth. You take a drink, children, you lay down, and the whole world's going to be spinning. And you're going, whoa, what is this? Whoa, what's going on? God is warning us about how wicked it is, how destructive it is. 